So let's move on to uh, sales transactions. Uh, now that we have, by we, I mean the retailer has purchased their inventory, they have, well, the point of their business is to sell it, right? So we are moving on to sales transactions. Now, sales transactions um, also um, affected by sales discounts, sales returns, and sale allowances. Um, and that will result in net sales. And you will see that in our income statement later as well. Um, now, uh, if we look at the example of when the retailer, seller, yeah, retailer in this case uh, is the seller, uh, seller. Uh, it, the customer who purchases 300 plants on credit uh, for $3,000, this is a sales price, sales price, uh, and this is the original cost of these uh, items on the accounts, inventory accounts of this retailer, we will record a simple uh, sales transaction. Yeah, So this is the simple sales transaction, sales uh, transaction that you are familiar with. Now, uh, what uh, it is noted here, this is in case the company is using perpetual inventory system, they will also immediately record a change change in the inventory, uh, inventory account. Uh, you will see that immediately reflected in the cost of goods sold. So the cost, this cost, will be recorded in the cost of goods sold. An inventory, whereas this sales price will be seen in our sales account. Now, um, this is a simple sales part. Now, if we assume that the company uh, or the customer who bought these plants uh, finds out that hundreds, uh, hundred of these plants are uh, damaged or uh, infested with bugs, uh, he returns it to the retailer. In this case, our retailer, again, don't forget these all entries are from the perspective of the retailer, who is the seller in this case, yeah, not the buyer. Uh, he will record or it will record the sales return allowance that will be in a debit side of the account and account receivable going down. If we look at our original entry, which involved account receivable, yes, yeah, so this one, yes, yeah, so this one, account receivable when we first made the sale receivable. We made the sale, we recorded 3000 in a debit, meaning that the customer owes uh, to the company. We had sales account, uh, which uh, increased in a debit, uh, in a credit. And now that we are getting the return, yeah, this is a return. Uh, we will record the uh, change or now, uh, yes, the, the customer bought $3,000 worth of inventory, but he returns uh, how much? Thousand of this. Yeah, so now the customer owes less and it's 2000 the total account receivable but where is the other sales so it's not in the sales account that we're going to write it not here not here but we're going to create a different account called sales return and allowance and we're going to record that on the debit side meaning this one yeah so this sales uh, and return allowance account is a contra contra revenue account meaning that it will re be reflected yeah, on the sales in the income statement, you will see this uh, as a reduction in the sales eventually. But when we record it, we record it as a sales uh, return and, uh, allowance account. And the same way we have to, because this is a perpetual inventory system, uh, we, we saw the change right away. We have to reverse that entry. And why it is the 400, not 1,200. So at first they bought 300 plants. And this, if we divide this, by uh, 300 plants, it means that each plant costs four dollars. And because here they return hundred of inventory, uh, then four multiplied by a hundred is four hundred dollars, not you know full price. I, I hope that's uh, clear. Uh, now the perpetual and periodic inventory system they differ uh, in a sense on in the timing of recognition. Yeah, uh, the perpetual inventory system automatically updates uh, records of the inventory, so they record the changes in the inventory as we go. Uh, on the other hand, periodic inventory system updates the records only at the end of the operating cycle, not on the go, but at the end of the operating cycle. Now let's look at at the end of the let's say at the end of uh, the period. Yeah, so if you use this, um, sorry, period. 
if you use this kind of expression, it helps you to connect this periodic word with the word period. So at the end of the period, you get periodic momentary system uh, records at the end of the period. Yeah, so sorry for repetition. Um, okay, so perpetual inventory system automatically updates the account name is merchandise inventory. Yeah, so this is merchandise inventory account and the cost of goods sold account is reported on the income statement. Now, under the periodic inventory system, so as we saw it earlier, right, so when we had the sale, uh, let, let me just go back. So this is a record based on the perpetual inventory system. So the accounts involved are, like I said, merchandising inventory and the cost of goods sold. Yeah? So these are the titles of the account. Whereas in the periodic inventory system, they will use a different account called purchases account. Um, the, uh, this one will be updated, whereas the merchandising inventory, which also in, in, in exists under the periodic system, it will stay unchanged until the verification of inventory balance happens at the end, at the end of the period. Yeah, period. Okay, merchandise inventory account balance is reported in the balance sheet, while the purchases account will be recorded in the income statement. Yeah, so again, this you're gonna see that later. So uh, for now, just commit to the memory that the uh, because the update of the merchandise inventory doesn't happen on the go in the periodic system. Uh, in when the sale happens, we record it in the periodic system under the purchase account and not the. Um, the, the the not during the sale i'm sorry when when they're purchasing yeah uh, the, when the purchase is happening this has nothing to do with the sales because in the periodic system uh, the sales um transaction is recorded but the change in the inventory does not get recorded right so when they are buying the inventory it will be recorded in the purchases account under the periodic system these are the differences yeah of um uh, not the different, yeah, between the periodic system and the perpetual inventory system at different types of transactions. So this is, uh, let me see, so this is merchandise inventory accounts bill. This is the purchase, purchase transaction, purchase transaction. Uh, when the uh, transaction, when the um, retailer is the buyer, yeah, retailer or the merchandiser is the buyer, it buys from the manufacturer. And in this case, the perpetual inventory system, because it's a uh, constantly updated type of uh, uh, sort of method, the merchandise inventory immediately gets uh, a, an increase on the debit and accounts payable uh, increase in the credit, whereas periodic, like I said, will be recorded on the purchase uh, account, not on the merchandise inventory account. Uh, moving on, this is the next one. This is an example of the um, purchase purchase either return or allowance yeah again it, this is the case when the retailer is the buyer yeah we're still sticking to the fact that this is whole is related to the um, yeah uh, the retailer is the buyer so again in this case account payable is going to decrease and the merchandise is going to, uh, uh, merchandise inventory is going to dec uh, decrease through the credit and we're going to record it not in the merchandise because the merchandise inventory in the periodic one does not get um, recorded as you saw it earlier here so the reversal will happen on the separate account called purchase uh, return and allowance account here in this one Again, this is something that you have to commit to the memory. The logic is simple because periodic system does not update merchandise inventory account, which is why the purchase allowance and uh, return account will get affected. Next one, a periodic, a perpetual periodic inventory system. Um, this is, uh, what is this? This is the discount, yeah? Purchase discount, purchase discount transaction. Uh, this is when uh, the uh, buyer, in this case, retailer, uh, pays within the certain uh, period that, uh, you know, within the discount period, pays within the discount period, he gets the purchase discount with the perpetual inventory system. However, that reflection will be seen in the merchandise inventory uh, account, whereas in the uh, periodic system, we will show it in an account called purchase discount here. Again, this purchase discount account will have a negative effect on our uh, gross purchase. As you saw it earlier, it will reduce our gross purchase uh, to net purchase. Uh, moving on, uh, this is the sales transactions transactions where the perpetual inventory system has additional entry in the form of this cost of goods sold, 
Yeah, this is the only difference. Everything else is the same uh, between the perpetual and periodic systems. So uh, in the perpetual, you immediately recognize cost of goods sold. Uh, in the uh, next one in here, this is the sales uh, return and allowance. And here, uh, the uh, perpetual inventory system, again, the entries are the same. The only difference is perpetual inventory system has to reverse the merchandise inventory account because when they first uh, recognize the sale, it gets uh, sort of reflected in the cost of goods sold in merchandise inventory. So they have to reverse it when there is a certain sale and return happening. Yeah? So this is that. Other than that, it's similar. And then uh, in the, uh, uh, this one is a discount, yeah? So in the discount sales, sales discount, the entries are exactly the same, yeah? So this is the sales, sorry, this is the sales, uh, sales discount, sales discount, whereas the previous one, this is the allowance, yeah? Sorry, this is the allowance, this one. So this is the uh, sales allowance transaction. And these uh, don't get any difference because, um, uh, why? So basically when there is a discount and there is allowance, there is no change in the uh, cost of goods sold, or there is no change in the merchandising inventory. Um, the only uh, different uh, changes will happen to the sales account because you know there is a return or there is allowance and the same goes for the sales discount that will affect our sales account eventually.